At some point in our lives, we will stop working. For many of us, it will be our choice as to when that event happens. But what happens if it isn't your choice? An unplanned retirement can lead to some difficult decisions. Today, we discuss the things that you need to consider if you're forced to retire before you're ready. Hello, welcome back to Wealth Wednesday, our bi-weekly show to help you make better decisions with money. You can find more about us at cfswv.com and check out our YouTube channel, that's at Commonwealth Financial. Most people have an idea of when they would like to retire. For some, it might be 55, and for others, it could be 85. Just ask me how I know that. If we're fortunate, we can control this to a degree, but any one of us, that choice could be out of our control. Today, I'm joined by CFP Pro, Nikki Ludi. Nikki, a client comes to you, they've basically been forced to retire. Where do you start? Well, Neil, I think the, the first question is, um, what's your age, number one? Um, and then what do you have saved and where? Um, you know, the biggest thing, depending on your age of retirement, there's a couple of different um, kind of rules that would apply. So depending on whether you can draw Social Security or not yet or and or a pension, um, if you paid into a separate system, um, whether you have qualified money in a 401k plan that you need to draw out or an IRA, there's certain age limits. So the big question is, I think in my mind, is if you're under the age of, let's say, 62, then you're not able to draw uh, Social Security yet. So you'll be drawing from other assets to pay for this. Um, if you're above 62, obviously, you could look at starting to draw Social Security early, as early as that age 62. Um, but if you do need to draw from other assets at those earlier ages, then the other magical number becomes age 59 and a half. Um, because if all your money is tied up into uh, retirement plans, depending on, again, where, where this money is at, um, there's a lot of rules and restrictions that you have to uh, be mindful of. So let's focus on this Social Security side for a minute. And depending on when your retirement happens, as you mentioned, it could have a significant impact on your Social Security benefits. First off, it can reduce the number of your higher earnings years. And, and the math behind Social Security takes your 35 highest years. And if you're putting in zeros from, say, 55 to 60, it's going to reduce your primary insurance amount. And then the other side of this is for a lot of people, it's going to force them to take their Social Security benefits early. And that means probably age 62 or 62 in one month is kind of the technical side of that. And that means big discounts, like 30% discounts. Now, if you're forced to medically retire and you may want to look at applying for disability benefits and if that would behoove you, because if, if you can get disability, it's going to solve a couple of problems in that realm. One, you're not going to take the discount for early retirement. And two, Medicare is going to apply in this case. So Nikki, then this brings me to our next point, the health insurance side of this, that's going to be a significant concern if you're forced to retire before you're age 65. What do people need to know about this? Yeah, I think this is probably the number one question I get is a lot of people think in their minds, oh, I want to retire at 62. That's the first time I can draw Social Security. And then my next question becomes, what are you going to do for health insurance? Because the majority of clients retiring before 65, quite honestly, just don't have any sort of benefit, um, so they're buying on the marketplace individually. Uh, so a couple of different options. If your um, employer had health insurance, you can uh, use what's called COBRA, which is just a continuation of benefits. But keep in mind that all COBRA is, is you're paying the full premium. So if your employer was you know, kicking in some dollars towards your health insurance, that goes away. Um, so that's uh, one option, but that only goes for so long. So depending on the circumstances, it can go between 18 and 36 months uh, for most people. Um, the next option would be, you know, are you going to buy it yourself? Um, which is usually when people, this is the aha moment of whether they're going to uh, go back to work and find another job or not. Because the reality is, for most people, just buying individual health insurance coverage, not through a group, it's um, costing about $1,000 a month. And so then the question becomes, what is your income? Because there are certain ways through the health insurance marketplace that you can potentially qualify for discounts. But if you don't fit that mold um, and there's certain income limits, then it can be a challenge because it's a huge expense that comes out. And again, I go back to 
depending on where your money is, how are you going to draw down money to pay for this? Um, and, you know, for how long? Because again, all this, you know, depends on, are we talking about, are you 55 or are you 60? Are you 62? Um, but to bridge that gap to 65 um, sometimes can be a big hurdle if you're paying out, you know, 12 grand a year for health insurance alone. So at the, at the end of the day, this is all going to come down to your cash flow, right? And this is one of the things right. we always stress to people is cash flow. So having a really good handle on your expenses and a lot of times just exercising some self-control and limiting the withdrawal rate on your assets. You know, we, we've talked about in, in past episodes and in, in general that the 4% rule is kind of a standard that we use. But if you, if you get forced to retire at 55, that may be too much. And you may want to look at doing something even less than that, or you may have to look at it from the standpoint of I'm going to do it here at a 4%, 4.5% level for a while. But at 62, when I can start Social Security, I may have to reduce uh, that when Social Security kicks in. But you know, between the higher possible living costs from health insurance premiums and, and things you just didn't plan for, you could be in a real spot. So you may end up finding that you have to adjust your lifestyle a little bit. You certainly didn't plan to retire and you don't want to, but to make assets last and for financial survival, it may be the only thing that you really can do is to just manage things a lot better and cut back where you can. Nikki, what else are we missing here? What are some other things we should be thinking about here? Are there any kind of weird things that we need to be on the lookout for? I think the probably the the second question or the the second point that I usually see with clients is they get a little bit of sicker shock once they start into that withdrawal phase with taxes um, because the majority of people have quite a bit of money built up in retirement accounts and I have yet to see a client come in to date that has more money in Roth funds than they do in traditional. Quite honestly, uh, it's just not been around long enough. And so the next challenge becomes if you have all your money built up in retirement plans, even if you have several hundred thousand or, you know, uh, close to a million dollars in a retirement plan, if you're drawing all of that from qualified assets, your tax bracket's going to jump. So if you if you need fifty thousand dollars a year, let's say, to live off of, that might mean that you're withdrawing seventy five thousand to net 50. And I think that's where people get a little bit of a reality check in where they need to draw from. So it's always good to have multiple buckets of money. It's not that your retirement plan can't be the majority of it, but that's likely going to be something you want to withdraw um, much, uh, I guess, over a um, smoother withdrawal rate. You don't want to really front end your retirement. And plus two, you need to be over 59 and a half uh, to access that money anyways. If it's in an IRA, some um, exceptions to the rule, if you retired from a company after 55, you can get it out early if it's in a 401k plan. Um, but I see people that need to dip into it. That's the where the majority of their money is. So I think saving either in an emergency fund in a bank account, an unqualified account, some other sort of account that you can um, not be utilizing all that retirement money at once um, definitely makes sense for most people. So you can smooth out the taxation as well. Yeah, and I think one of the things that's kind of crept up on me here recently is that, you know, in a situation where someone was forced to retire a little bit earlier and they're not quite full retirement age, but they're still trying to work part time and there's an earnings limit for social security that if you make too much, they will start taking your social security benefits away. So you want to be very careful about that. If you are going to work part-time, you want to know what those limits are. So you don't exceed that from your earnings. Otherwise, you know, if you, if you were forced to retire at 62, you started your social security and six months later, you decided you're going back to work. You could run into some real problems with losing that social security benefit. I mean, that's kind of a generalized thing. And there are some technical things in there that you can, uh, start over, so to speak, on a, on a whim, you know, not, not just on a whim, but it, you'd have to pay it back. That's kind of above and beyond what we're talking about here, but that is something that is out there. And the other side, the other thing that you need to be aware of is that if you are under 59 and a half, the 72 T substantially equal periodic payments rule can be your friend if you need it to be, but it's very complicated. You want to make sure you're talking to somebody who's been through that and can understand how the rules work with that particular program, because if you mess it up, 
the penalties can be severe. Bottom line, I think, Nikki, you would agree, understand your cash flow, how you're spending your money, understand where your money is, and be smart about how you do it. And talk to a pro like Nikki here. She can help guide you through that, as can any of the members of our team. If you'd like to learn more, that's Commonwealth Financial on YouTube, CFSWV. If you like this episode today, thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks.